Now to get the multiple elements inside the lens, we're going to tab back into this select faces. I'm going to go to the side view again. I'm actually going to press backstar bash on the number pad just so we can solo this. Make sure everything is selected and duplicate it in edit mode. I'm going to go duplicate Y, pull this one there. I'm going to shrink this one down, do it again, duplicate Y. And this is basically what's inside of a real lens in the camera. If you just go ahead and Google search what's inside of a lens. You got basically pieces of glass like this, basically, right? Tab out of that now. So there it is. It, in a nutshell, that's how I basically made the whole lens. The rest was all basically down to texturing. All right. Now, as far as the world shade, I used an HDRI from Parley Haven. I used the art room, the art workshop. That's my my favorite. All right, guys, I had to switch to a photo because the renderer um, running Octane and running OBS at the same time, it kills my laptop. It's just unworkable. Here is basically this shader that I used for the glass element inside of here and you can even see I have that like color tint that happens when you look at a lens you'll get this basically this discoloration you get like these two different colors like magenta and owl this is how I did that so what I basically did was I came in here and made a specular material if you go shift a you go down to materials and right here specular material anytime I know that I want something to be glass I don't use a universal. I just go straight to a specular material. It helps on render resources. From there, I changed this from Octane to GGX Energy Preserve. And then off that, after that, I came here and checked fake shadows and effect alpha. This also helps our render time here. And then from there, all I did was in the refraction here, I added in this color map basically to give this here, this color, this tone. You can see we got these like blue tones in this color here. This is happening because of this. Plug the gradient map into the refraction and then from there add in a fall off map and if for those of you coming from regular blender cycles this would be a layer weight node so it's the same thing it's a fall off map and this basically allows us to see it at certain angles when you're rotating this you'll see it at a different angle versus the other angle this is that map right here this is what we use in octane called a fall off map so i have those two plugged into there and then here on the top is the roughness and it didn't come out in the image fortunately i should have pumped it up a little bit more but i do have a gradient map which is a smudge map here it's a 4k smudge map and i just have that plugged in here using a box projection into the projection and then i scaled it down so it's very small and it's not even noticeable in the image so i it's actually probably not even neat that's pretty much it here for the whole node. I did tweak the index of refraction here, 1.7 to, to get this to be more pronounced. This is not true accurate, like a true glass. Glass, I think is 1.5. I'm at 1.74, so I tweaked it just so I, I wanted you to be able to see that other glass elements in there. I also had here, this material here, I had this plastic material and this is a metal material for the plastic material and to also get these lines in here. Let me show you how I did that. All right. So for those lines and that piece here, here is the main material. I used the universal material. It is basically set to the albedo is kind of like gray. It's basically like a plastic material. Every, uh, GGX is on right there. And then everything else is stock, right? I did throw in this noise texture here on the roughness. I wanted it to be a little bit grunged out, a little bit used. Here are the settings for this texture, which work out really nice. I'm using turbulence, octave eight with omega at 0.9. And then the gammas, these gamma and contrast, you just basically want to tweak on these until you get something that you like as far as the appearance, okay? And then down here, I have a bump node. This bump node is what's generating these lines right here that you see on the inside of lenses. These lines right here, at first str I struggled to figure out how was I going to get this to work? It turns out to be extremely easy. This sine wave texture does exactly that here. Let me actually fire up the render and try to show you what this does. Here is the sine tech, the sine wave texture plugged into the albedo just so we can see what's happening. And at the moment, you don't really see anything. So when I first used this, I thought this wasn't working. But then once you hook up your, you know, XYZ to UV projection on here and then add in your UV transform, if I grab my scale, check this out. Now you start to see something happening, right? If I continue to go smaller, you can see the effect of the sine wave. This is what's happening. It's like literally making these super tiny, tiny lines here. And it changes based on your projection, right? So if we were to take this projection here, maybe just go ahead and kill this, right? Let me add in it. See, there, there's no projection, right? And you can see this is what's happening. This